problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but if you ain't one, I got the rap patrol on the patrol. Foes that want to make sure my cast is closed. Rap critics to say it's money cash. I'm from the hood, stupid, what type of facts are those? If you grew up, Pitbull Cruz is ready to silence the trash talker. Hey. It's a night full of world title fights, live on PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Las Vegas as we begin fight week. It is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video this Saturday from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. We have Australia's own Tim Zhu defending his WBO Super Welterweight crown against the towering inferno Sebastian Fundora. Two world championships will be on the line. The WBO Super Welterweight Championship and the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the world will be decided. We have four world championship fights on our pay-per-view that comes your way at 8 Eastern, 5 local time, including our co-main event, the WBA Super Lightweight Champion of the World, Rolando Roli Romero, will defend his championship against the world title contender from Mexico, the always entertaining Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Also, we have Cuban star at Islandi, the American Dream Lada, defending his WBA Middleweight World Championship against Australia's Michael Zarafa. And to begin the pay-per-view, WBC Flyweight World Champion Julio Cesar Martinez will defend his title against the unbeaten Angelino Cordova in the pay-per-view opener. PBC on Prime Video Action will precede the pay-per-view, and it'll stream live and for free beginning at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. Rising unbeaten middleweight, Elijah Garcia will take on veteran contender Kyron Davis in our main event. Super welterweight contenders in Sergei Boachuk and Brian Mendoza will collide. That'll be for the interim WBC Super Welterweight title. That'll open up the stream. The event comes your way. Compliments and promoted by TGB Promotions. The main event is promoted in association with No Limit Boxing. Tickets for the live event are available at AXS.com. Many of you are here for vacation conventions, whatever the case may be. Nothing like watching PBC action at T-Mobile Arena as the action begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time with our main car two hours before that, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. Our streaming fights come your way with two outstanding matchups. But right now, we want to bring into Las Vegas this man. 18 wins, no losses, one draw. 12 wins coming by way of knockout. 28 years of age from Ciudad Bolivar, Venezuela, training out of Roselle Park, New Jersey. An experienced amateur who debuted back in 2017 and had a marvelous win in his last outing as he topped former world champion Angel Acosta. Ladies and gentlemen, he looks to become a world champion on Saturday night. Here is Angelino Cordova. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have Angelino Cordova, who has made his entrance here in Las Vegas. We got Martin Botter. If we could look over here, I like at the camera this way. Angelino Cordova matches up against Julio Cesar Martinez for the WBC Flyweight World Championship. Angelino, what does this experience, being here in Las Vegas, getting ready to compete and challenge for a world title, what emotions are you feeling? Contame tus emociones, cómo te has sentido viniendo acá a Las Vegas para este gran fin de semana, gran cartelera para vos. Oye, primero que todo, buenas tardes, saludos a todos. Pues muy emocionado, gracias a Dios por eh, traerme a este lugar y pues muy contento con este público hermoso que se encuentra aquí, que le gusta el boxeo de corazón. 
I'm so excited. I'm really glad to be here. And more than anything, I'm thankful with this beautiful crowd. You boxing fans, I love you all. And I'm so excited to show you all what I can do on Saturday night. Now, in your opinion, where do you feel like you have the edge over your opponent in Julio Cesar Martinez? ¿Dónde dirías que está tu ventaja contra Martínez? Pues yo vine a, a, a pelear y, y a ser mejor. Vine a buscar el título del mundo, solo eso. Y vine a pelear y, y vine a todo. I just came here to fight. I came here to obtain a world title. I came here to give him my all. That's what I can tell you and that's what I'm going to do. When people tune in on Saturday around the world, on Prime Video, PBC Pay-Per-View, uh, what are they going to witness as you collide against Julio Cesar Martinez? ¿Qué le puedes decir ahora al público a medida que estás esperando tu choque contra Julio Cesar Martinez? ¿Qué podemos esperar de esta gran pelea? Bueno, el público que esté muy pendiente, que este el ring nuevamente echará chispa el día sábado 30 de marzo del 2024 aquí en Las Vegas, Nevada. Así que muy pendiente. You're going to see sparks fly on March 30th here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's going to be a can't miss fight and you're going to want to be there to win this, I guarantee it. What has the response been from your fellow countrymen? I'm sure they're going to be watching on Saturday. And how important is it for you to become a world champion and take your title back to your homeland? ¿Qué tan importante será para ti ser a tus compatriotas y llevarte el campeonato mundial a tu país este sábado? Será algo, primero que nada, histórico y, y primeramente Dios será así. It's going to be a historic night and God willing, I'm going to make it happen. Fighters of Mexican descent, Julio Cesar Martinez, including being one of them, are very aggressive, love to mix it up and go toe to toe. Do you like the fact that it probably isn't going to be that difficult to find this guy and you guys are going to go toe to toe and really, more than likely, provide a war. ¿Te gusta que no va a ser difícil encontrar a Martínez? Lo más probable es que sea una guerra mano a mano. ¿Te gusta ese tipo de enfrentamiento, esa estrategia? Sí, me gusta, me gusta, me gusta eso. Y sé que va a ser una guerra total y por eso estoy muy emocionado. Por eso estoy y tan invitado a ver esa guerra. No se la pueden perder. I'm so excited to, win, to, to do that, to witness that war and to be able to do uh, what I came here to do, which is give the fans what they want, an all-out war that you're not going to want to miss. Finally, what do you want to tell all the fans here in Las Vegas and around the world? ¿Qué te gustaría decir a la gente acá en Las Vegas y alrededor del mundo? Que sigan luchando, que lo, los sueños sí se pueden y Dios me los bendiga. Keep fighting because dreams can come true and God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Angelino Cordova. He's going to work out for all of you here in Las Vegas. We have Angelino Cordova undefeated from Venezuela looking to take his world championship back home to his homeland as he takes on Julio Cesar Martinez, who will be defending his WBC Flyweight World Championship as Julio Cesar Martinez from Mexico taking all this man in Angelino Cordova. Saturday night's event promoted by TGB Promotions. The main event is promoted in association with No Limit Boxing. This begins the pay-per-view at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. It is Angelino Cordova working out here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Por mi patria, por mi nación, ninguna discriminación. Aquí no hay raza ni religión. Bailalo por obligación. Qué calor. Qué calor. Qué calor.
como el vapor en la playa bañado en sudor los bikinis te quedan mejor tú eres mi amor, mol, mol, mol cada vez que veo ese y yo me quedo loco tú le das abajo mami con mucho saoco como tú lo mueves en el mundo lo mueves poco dale, dale, baila lo loco como tú lo mueves en el mundo lo mueves poco dale, dale, baila lo loco como tú lo mueves en el mundo lo mueves poco calentamiento global anda suelto el animal mano arriba el que es real que el calor Yeah, but... 
Ladies and gentlemen, inside the ring, we have the undefeated from Venezuela, Angelino Cordova. He takes on Julio Cesar Martinez. Cordova looks to become a world champion. This will begin our pay-per-view. It is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Coming up on Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Let's give a round of applause to Angelino Cordova. All right, so we will allow Angelino Cordova to go ahead and depart the ring. He can go ahead and make his way out to this way. But Angelino Cordova getting set to collide against Julio Cesar Martinez coming up on a Saturday. Going to be an exceptional matchup. And what a way to kick off what is going to be an outstanding night of boxing for World Championship fights on our main card that starts 8 Eastern by Pacific time before that two streaming matchups coming your way at 6 Eastern 3 Pacific time live on a prime video for free this one is going to be a showdown without a doubt as Angelino Cordova taking photos for all the fans that are certainly looking forward to this highly anticipated flyweight matchup now we go from the flyweight division we transition now to the middleweight division as we will have two australians looking to make a definitive statement we all know about tim Zhu defending his wbo super welterweight championship against the towering inferno sebastian Pundoda. Also, that'll be for a vacant WBC Super Welterweight Championship as well. So two world championships on the line in our main event. But the second fight on our pay-per-view also features an Australian. This man, 31 wins, four losses, 19 wins coming by way of Naka. The number one ranked mandatory WBA challenger at 160 pounds. A longtime contender who was rattled off. Four straight victories. He comes to us from Melbourne, Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Zarafa. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Zarafa. Michael, it's great to see you. Talk about a moment for you and for Australian boxing. I mentioned about Tim Zhu, but you are the second fight on the pay-per-view. You look to become a world champion. First of all, for you personally, what does this moment mean? Uh, this means everything to me. You know, this is thir this fight's 13 months overdue. You know, should have happened uh, uh, last year, but we're here now, and um, I want to bring back that world title. This is my absolute life, and um, this is more than a fight for me. Why do you say that it's more than a fight for you? Uh, this fight's dedicated to my sister, who's fighting her own fight at the moment. You know, she's suffering with breast cancer, um, and this fight's for her. Um, she's in her own fight for her life, so 12 rounds with Lara is nothing compared to that. What has your training camp been like? I mean, has it been... Uh, you know, because it has been a, a bit anticipated for a while, uh, how have you been able to make sure that you don't peak too early and you're hitting stride at the right time? I've been lucky enough to have Rachel and Anito Denier, um, you know, in my corner, huge artillery going into this fight. You know, they've kept me sane and kept me exactly where I need to be and, and pushing the paces. And, um, you know, no stone's been left unturned. You know, we're here now. We've traveled to the other side of the world not to be an opponent. We're here to, to take what's rightfully mine. For Australian boxing in, in total, you and Tim Zhu competed on the same card. Both of you guys can put and, and really get on the plane going back to Australia as world champions. What would that mean to you? Yeah, it means huge for Australian boxing. You know, you've got Liam Wilson fighting the night before us. Um, you know, three Aussies trying to bring home belts. You know, usually me and Tim Zhu are against each other. But, um, you know, come Saturday night, I'm in his corner and I hope he wins. And, um, you know, hopefully he's in, the, he's in my corner the same night. But, I mean, uh, it's going to be huge for Australian boxing. Ed Islandi Lada has been around for a long time. We know his accomplishments, a lengthy pedigree from the amateurs, having been a successful pro for a long time. What are you expecting out of the man known as the American Dream? 
Yeah, look, I'm a huge fan of Lara, you know, even prior to us becoming opponents. You know, I know he's, he's a great mover, um, but he's getting on. Um, I truly believe he's held the belt for way too long. He's just looking for a payday with Danny Garcia or one of those guys. Um, I'm there to upset the plan and, and, and take, like I said, what's rightfully mine. This fight should have happened 13 months ago. Um, I know it's going to be a hard fight, and like I said, I'm prepared for, for, for 12 rounds. I'm prepared for 15 rounds if it was, but 12 rounds, so be it. Could it be a possibility that he has floated the names out like Danny Garcia that he could be overlooking you? I mean, is that, you know, even entered into your thought process? Yeah, 100%. You know, Jeff Horn did the same thing. Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao, then took me as a light fight, and I ended up knocking him out. So, um, you know, I think he's doing the same thing. He's already looking past me, um, and that's a huge mistake. You know, it's, it's huge confidence in my corner. Have you thought about when you make that ring walk here at T-Mobile Arena? I know that there are going to be a lot of Australians here, probably more than what typically we've seen in recent memory, the kind of emotions that you'll feel like walking to the ring, or is it something to where you're just focused on the task at hand? I'm fully focused. I mean, I've been here before. You know, I've been there when I fought Cal Brook, Peter Quillen. Um, this is just another night for me, and the, the crowd, the people, um, you know, I'm grateful to be fighting at such a huge stadium in front of all of you people. Um, and I thank you all the love and support. But for me, I'm fully focused on the task ahead. Well, Michael, we appreciate the time. We'll allow you to work out for all the fans. Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause from Melbourne, Australia. Michael Zarafan. Also, we got the Filipino flash, Nonito Donaire in the house. Inside the ring, ladies and gentlemen, we have Michael Zarafam, who takes on Edislandi Lada for the WBA Middleweight Championship, the second fight on our PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Michael Zarafa looking to go ahead and become a world champion and set the tone for what the entire country of Australia hopes to be a historic night 
for Australian boxing. Michael, real quick, before we get ready to let you go, what do you want to tell the fans out here? But, you know, for specific, specifically, uh, the Australian fight fans that are watching, I know that they're going to be very much tuned in, uh, watching you both go and, and see if you can make these dreams become a reality. Uh, look, yeah, I just want to firstly say thanks to everyone that's come out today, today to support the, the event. Um, you know, thank God for giving me the opportunity. And for everyone that's shown their love and support, it means so much. You know, I wouldn't be here today without all that. Um, you know, without you guys, there's no me. And um, you know, I truly, truly are feeling the love. And, um, you know, God bless you all. And thank you so much. And hopefully I make you all proud. Win, lose, or draw. Like I said, I'm out there giving it my absolute all. And um, we want to hear and the new. And we will. What about fighting here in Las Vegas, the fighting capital of the world? This is huge. This is a dream come true. You know, I told my family when I was a little kid that one day I'll fight here and for a world title and, and you know, we're three days out. So, again, I'm counting my blessings and, um, you know, I thank God and, and, and thank you all. Thank you very much. Michael Zarafa, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for him. That'll be the second fight on our pay-per-view, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time is when we get rolling as Saturday night. Well, no doubt you can expect a battle between Michael Zarafa and Edislandi Ladam. And coming up, we will go back to our pay-per-view opener as we will talk with the WBC flyweight world champion. Four world championship fights on our pay-per-view. Again, just an absolutely stacked night of boxing and also two fights before we go live on pay-per-view. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go back to our pay-per-view opener as we have a very proud world champion. He is the reigning WBC flyweight world champion looking to make his sixth defense coming up on a Saturday, trained by the renowned Eddie Reynoso, captured his world title back in 2019 with a ninth-round stoppage over Christopher Rosales. His record, 20 wins, 15 of those coming by way of knockout against just two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the defending world champion from Mexico, Julio Cesar Martinez. Julio Cesar Martinez will take on Angelino Cordova. We have a round of applause for Julio Cesar Martinez. Also, we'll have Martin Bottom translate for us. Julio Cesar being here in Las Vegas on a card like this in his PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. How excited are you for Saturday? ¿Qué tal entusiasmado estás para el sábado? Una cartelera pay-per-view por Prime. ¿Qué significa esto para vos? Pues muy contento, la verdad emocionado de volverme a volver a regresar aquí a, a Las Vegas. Contento de volverme a subir al ring y pues más que nada ansioso por por ya estar arriba. I'm so happy to be back here in Vegas, to be back inside the ring and I'm eager to show you guys what I'm capable of inside the ring. I am really excited for you all. How would you assess your opponent, the undefeated Angelino Cordova? Eh, ¿qué te qué opinas de tu oponente, Angelino Cordova? Pues, pues es un buen oponente, va, va invicto, este, se mueve bien, venimos preparados para lo que sea, para el choque o, o la larga distancia, pero pues como siempre, ¿no? Con todo menos con miedo. You know, he, he's someone that's agile, that knows how to move, so we're ready for anything. We can go toe to toe in an all-out war, we can also fight tactically and, and with the reach. But you know what? We're going to come after it all with everything but with fear. Because he is a mover, I, I assume that you plan on cutting off the ring and trying to make it difficult for him to be able to get around as easy? Me imagino que, como vos dijiste, como se mueve, le vas a intentar recortar el ring e intentar que no le sea tan fácil moverse dentro del cuadrilátero. Así es, vamos a ir ahora sí que a presionarlo. Vamos, a, venimos con todo, venimos bien preparados, motivados para regresar con, con todo este 30 de marzo. Absolutely, we're going to come after him, we're going to pressure him, and we're going to make sure that, we, that he feels us and that he knows we're the champs of March 30th. Do you feel that you have the ability to go ahead, not only beat him, but possibly stop him? Sentís que tenés la capacidad de no solo derrotarlo, sino que también de noquearlo? 
Venimos bien preparados, venimos para lo que sea, así es, como siempre lo he dicho, estamos aquí por algo y venimos a hacer aquí historia y vamos por los cuatro cinturones. Absolutely, I'm ready for anything. Like I said before, I'm here to make history. And not only that, this is the beginning of the path to go after all four belts. I want to be undisputed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll allow Julio Cesar Martinez to work out. A round of applause for the champion from Mexico. It is Julio Cesar Martinez. Check, check, check. For those of you just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, inside the ring, we have Julio Cesar Martinez. He's the WBC Flyweight World Champion. He will take on Angelino Cordova. Julio Cesar Martinez, known as El Rey from Mexico. He mentioned that he wants to be undisputed world champion in the flyweight division as he'll put his skills to the test against Angelino Cordova at Timo Burlina here in Las Vegas. One more round of applause for the WBC flyweight world champion in Julio Cesar Martinez. And he will absolutely look forward to putting on a dazzling display against Angelino Cordova and potentially hand him the first loss of his career. And one thing about it, the lighter weight classes are so exciting and no doubt explosive. I know a lot of fans want to see Julio Cesar Martinez, take photos with him, and also just get a closer glimpse of the world champion in Julio Cesar Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, Saturday's card is absolutely stacked. Four world championship fights. Awesome. We have a matchup at 154 pounds on the PBC on Prime video stream coming your way at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. We have Serge Bohachuk and Brian Mendoza. They will match up for the interim WBC Super Welterweight title that will open up the stream. In the main event of our stream, we'll have rising unbeaten middleweight Elijah Garcia taking on veteran contender Kyron Davis in our main event on the stream. That starts at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. So we're starting early here in Las Vegas. For those of you that will be at T-Mobile Arena, you want to get there early or wherever you are around the country, you know, we want to make sure that you go ahead and settle in for six incredible fights as either one of these six fights very well could be a main event anywhere in the world. We will be talking with the WBA middleweight world champion, Edeslandi Lada, plus 
Over the course of the next few hours, we will hear from Rolando Roly Romero, the WBA Super Lightweight World Champion. Roly Romero, one of the most polarizing figures in the sport. And also, we'll be talking with Isaac Pitbull Cruz, who looks to become a world champion in this, his second opportunity. Also, we will have a conversation with the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, as he looks to up and Tim Zhu. And we'll speak with Australia's Tim Zhu in this, his first fight headlining here in Las Vegas in our main event. Two world championships will be on the line. Tim Zhu's WBO Super Welterweight Championship and the vacant WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the world. So the winner of our main event will take home not just one belt, but two world championships. And for Australia, talk about the fact that if Michael Zarafa can upend at his Landy Latam, and if Tim Zhu can be victorious, two world champions will be making their way from Las Vegas to Australia as we're going ahead. And they realize lifelong dreams. What a moment that would be for Australian boxing. But as I mentioned, an absolutely stacked night of boxing. But right now, for those of you watching the stream, we want to go ahead and take an introspective look at our Gloves Off series featuring none other than the always unique personality of Rolando Roly Romero. I'm not really a villain. I'm more of an anti-hero. A villain is doing evil things. Anti-hero, he's doing things for what's the best, right? Yeah, I'm not a villain. They just don't understand me. Let's push that condition to another level, man. Three. Two, one, let's go right now. Attack it. Roly Romero understands perception shapes reality. His flamboyant and boisterous persona has caught attention and opened doors, but has yet to fully yield the respect he desires. With Romero, words are prelude, hype, sell. But the ring, that's his arena of truth. Whether on a blockbuster stage or winning his first world title, he aims to show the world that the super lightweight champion is more than just his persona. A persona, by the way, that hides a deeper narrative. You know, as, as a kid, I spent a lot of time alone. I didn't really have no friends. I really couldn't speak until I was about 11 or so. You know, I, I, it sounded like I was speaking gibberish, you know? I think that's the reason why I enjoy every moment as much as I do now. Because I never had any of this growing up. The fact that I have the impact I do on the world, that's enough to make me happy, you know, to give me genuine joy. Good. Hips up a little bit. Good. I started boxing so late, I had to play catch up with everybody. All the top fighters around my age group, every single one of them has two, three hundred fights, right? And you get me, 16 fights that I became world champion twice, so. I always fight the most difficult fights. I don't decline a fight. Pitbull Cruz is a tremendous fighter, but I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. He's gonna come forward and try to beat the fuck out of me. And I don't really care whether people think I'm gonna beat him or not. I just know I'm gonna knock him out. You'll see, March 30th. He gets set to take on Isaac Pitbull Cruz, Rolando Roli Romero, not shy whatsoever, has a lot of self-belief, and he will be defending his WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World 
against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. He even went as far as to say, I'm going to stop him. Isaac Cruz is very durable, very determined, and does not make it easy on his adversaries. But it would be a statement win if Romero can up and and hug Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Another thing that I'm looking at when it comes to this particular fight. This is the co-main event, uh, PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Is the size. Isaac Cruz is coming up from 135 to 140. Rolando Roli Romero, there's been talk about him potentially moving up to even 147. So what will the size difference be? I saw a, a, a mention on X about how Isaac Pitbull Cruz, I saw his physique, and he looks in the best shape we've ever seen him. So I'm curious to see if Isaac Cruz is going to try to test the conditioning of Rolando Roli Romero. A couple of items just when it comes to a size standpoint. How much bigger is Romero going to be than that of Isaac Cruz? And because Romero's even discussing or it's even being floated around that he might go up to 147, will that hurt him when it comes to the later rounds if it gets to that far? Will Isaac Cruz try to set forth a frenetic pace that will make it very difficult for Rolando Roli Romero to keep up with him? And also, when you are a guy like Isaac Cruz and you're throwing punches in bunches, you leave yourself susceptible to be countered. Can Romero counter him and land something big? Plus, it's a new weight class for Isaac Cruz. How will he handle fighting bigger, stronger guys in Rolando Romero? We've seen Isaac Cruz in there against Gervonta Tank Davis. That was a couple of years ago at what is now Crypto.com Arena. He took Gervonta Davis to the distance, so it is clear that Isaac Cruz can handle big punchers, but this is five pounds north here at 140 pounds. All of these questions are going to be answered on Saturday. It is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, our main event. Tim Zhu from Australia defending his WBO Super Welterweight Championship of the World against the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundoram. This is a point I'm going to get into a little bit later on over the course of the grand arrivals and the workouts, but it is a nine-inch height advantage for the challenger, Sebastian Pundora. It is the biggest difference in height in a non-heavyweight matchup. So, my goodness, how will Tim Zhu deal with the height disparity that he's going to encounter on Saturday? Tim Zhu comes from boxing greatness in Costia Zoo, and now will be headlining for the first time. As a prize fighter, your goal always is to headline here in the fighting capital of the world. No matter what, as a prize fighter in combat sports, the goal is to make it here to Las Vegas. Tim Zhu had blockbuster events last year in Australia, but his focus has always been to get here to Las Vegas. Now he's here, and now he literally and figuratively has a tall task ahead of him in the Tower Inferno, Sebastian Fundora. Fundora gets the opportunity, was supposed to fight Sir A. Bogachuk, but Keith Thurman unable to compete on Saturday. That was the original assignment for Tim Zhu. So how is Tim Zhu going to handle with a change in opponent? How will Sebastian Fundora handle the change in opponent rather than fighting Sergei Bogachuk? Speaking of Bogachuk, he will take on Brian Mendoza, a previous Tim Zhu adversary that'll kick off the PBC on Prime video stream that occurs at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. So for those watching on the stream, you saw an in-depth look at Rolando Roli Romero. Now, let's get an examination at the man known as Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Mi esposa es una pieza muy clave en mi vida personal y profesional. 
Aunque yo me enoje, pues está duro y dale en la mañana, ¿no? A las 4 de la mañana en que empieza a sonar la alarma que yo, como quien dice, hace maña, ¿no? Para, para apagar el teléfono, para que se calle y no despertar, ¿no? Para levantarse a correr. Lo tengo que hacer porque, como ella me ha dicho, y tiene razón, ¿no? Pues si yo les hago falta a mis hijos, ¿quién los va a ver, no? Y pues realmente esa es la realidad. Isa, come on. Oh, what's wrong? You don't want to go inside the gym? He's scared. Come on. This Isak. Mm -hmm. She's a sweetheart. I felt like to get more in tune with this fight, I had to adopt a Chihuahua because I'm gonna, you know, to get to to understand them a little bit more, you know, because uh, you know I'm fighting ch a Chihuahua, you know. She's like a little afraid right now, you know, she's a little camera shy and stuff like this, you know, the same way Chihuahua Crew is going to be on uh, March 30th, you know. It's okay, you suck. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Todos los días yo le cocino. Cuando él empieza a entrenar, se tiene que medir lo que come. Se los tengo que pesar. Ya nos acostumbramos a esta rutina. Ya sabemos que viene la dieta y ya nos preparamos. Todos nos enfocamos. Tratamos de no comer cosas que él no pueda porque se le antojan. Pues tratamos de apoyarlo para que para él no sea tan difícil todo esto, sino que sea menos y sea más fácil. Cuando ya tiene fecha de pelea, a uno como esposa sí le entra un, ne un nervio, porque pues sabemos que son golpes al fin y al cabo y pues ni Dios lo quiera puede pasar algo, ¿no? Entonces sí empieza un nervio, una ansiedad. En ese aspecto es difícil. Tuvimos un inicio de pareja muy, muy duro, no, no teníamos algo estable prácticamente de todo un año que tuvimos que remar contra corriente. No teníamos dónde vivir, no había veces que se nos dificultaba hasta para la alimentación, pues no había dinero. Entonces, este, pues, este fue muy complicado. Yo como el hombre de la casa no tenía, llegó un momento, un punto donde no tenía que ofrecerles tan siquiera una tortilla, ¿no? Es que... Son muchos recuerdos de cuando la pasamos mal. Cuando, este, pues la pasamos difícil. Pues sí, son recuerdos muy, muy difíciles. Desgraciadamente se quedan muy marcados esos recuerdos por los momentos difíciles, que a pesar de eso, pues, fueron unas pruebas muy, muy, muy duras en nuestra persona, en nuestra relación y como pareja que, que Dios nos mandó para ver si realmente éramos uno para el otro o como quien dice, no, nada más nos interesaba lo, lo material, lo económico o lo físico, ¿no? Pues gracias al, al apoyo de mi esposa, pues para que se fijara y pudiéramos hacer algo en el boxeo y poder despuntar la carrera. Tough times make for tough men. And suddenly the name Pitbull seems less a nickname. And more a mindset that's been forged in fire. Soy muy orgulloso de mi hijo porque... En él veo el reflejo de lo que pude haber hecho yo y saber que tiene una nueva oportunidad por el campeonato del mundo que él no la va a desaprovechar y va, va a crear un orgullo no nada más para mí como su padre, sino para todo el mundo y para el pueblo mexicano. Se identifican con el guerrero mexicano por su forma de pelear, que es entregado y no importa 
el rival que tengamos enfrente ¿Qué opinas? Me da risa nada más Tú puedes maltratar cualquier objeto como él lo hizo con una piñata ofendiendo hasta el nombre de un perrito chihuahua ¿no? que no le pide nada eh, ha ofendido a mi hijo, a Pitbull, pero no es lo mismo ofender a alguien que no se puede defender en el momento a que lo tengas de frente. Es cuando va a sentir el pánico que el ring le va a quedar muy chiquito para, para correr. And that is an in-depth look at none other than Isaac Pitbull Cruz, who will challenge Rolando Rolia Romero for the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Now let's take a closer examination at our second pay-per-view matchup as we want to bring up a Cuban star who now resides here in Las Vegas, who is boxing's oldest world champion at 40 years of age. He's a man that's fought the best of his era with the record that includes 29 wins, three losses, three draws, 17 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the reigning and defending WBA middleweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Las Vegas, please welcome Ed Eslandi, the American Dream Alada. Here is Ed Islandi Ladam. Great to see the American Dream, the WBA middleweight champion of the world. Ed Islandi, how good does it feel to be back? ¿Qué también se siente, Islandi, el poder estar de regreso? Bueno, me siento muy contento. Primero de todo, te quiero darle las gracias a todos por estar presente aquí. Me siento muy contento y estamos listos para. para... I am really happy to be back here and I want to thank you all for your support. I'm looking forward to this weekend. How would you assess your opponent, Michael Zarafa? This has been a fight that's been over 13 months in the making, but, you know, how do you preview your opponent on Saturday? Ha pasado mucho tiempo desde que se ha estado planificando esta pelea. 13 meses. ¿Qué opinas de Zarafa como oponente? ¿Tu expectativa para esta pelea tras tanto tiempo de esperar volver al ring? Bueno, Zarafa es un boxeador joven, un boxeador de, de gran calidad. Si estás aquí para pelear conmigo es porque tiene buena calidad y vamos viendo el 30 de... Uh, Serafa is a high quality fighter. He's here for a reason. He's a contender. And then on March 30th, we'll see who is better inside the ring. You have fought everybody in the sport. You've been involved in some memorable matchups. But at 40 years of age, where do you find that fuel to continue to fight at this high level? Te has enfrentado a oponentes de mucha calidad durante tu carrera, pero a tu edad, ¿dónde encontrás la motivación para levantarte y seguir entrenándote duro, seguir buscando nuevas metas? Bueno, la motivación, primero que todo, eh, está en el ritmo, ¿no? en el cuadrilátero y en el entrenamiento. Creo que a, a, mi, a, a mi edad eh, he estado bien y me siento físicamente bien y mentalmente bien para tener la victoria ahora, el 30 de marzo. The motivation comes from the day to day, from the training, from wanting to get better each and every day. And I can guarantee you that at my age, like you said, I feel in tip-top shape both physically and mentally. I'm ready to go. Have you thought about how much longer you want to continue to fight? I mean, because, you know, we see you're in outstanding physical shape. It, it appears that, you know, you still have this strong desire to compete at this high level. But have you thought about how long you want to go? Bueno, se nota que estás en gran, en gran forma física, que tenés ese fuego sagrado, esa motivación, pero ¿has pensado en cuánto tiempo más querés pelear? Bueno, eh, todavía no he pensado en eso, ¿no? Estamos activos todavía, estamos bien, nos sentimos bien. Vamos a esperar el, los próximos años que vienen a ver qué pasa, pero de momento no tengo pensado todavía. Ya. Es retiro. I'm taking things year by year. Let's see what happens next year too. But I'm focused on the moment. I'm focused on this Saturday and on winning this fight. Taking things step by step. What are you hoping to demonstrate on Saturday against Michael Zarafa? ¿Qué esperas poder demostrar este sábado contra Michael Zarafa? 
Bueno, lo mejor, lo mejor de mí, ¿no? Lo que siempre he hecho en cada pelea que me he presentado, he dado lo mejor de mí y salí victorioso ese día. I'm just going to tell you that I'm going to give the best of me and I hope to come out with the win on Saturday. That's all I can do and that's, and that's what I'm going to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the WBA middleweight champion of the world, Erezlandi, the American Dream Lotto. Round of applause for the Las Vegas resident originally from Cuba. He's going to work out here in Las Vegas here at the MGM Grand ahead of his matchup at T-Mobile Arena on a Saturday. We have Edislandi Lada working out for all the fans here and also those watching on the PBC YouTube page. This Saturday, it is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. This is a part of our loaded night of boxing. Four world championship fights on the pay-per-view, including the WBA middleweight champion of the world, Edislandi Lada defending his crown against Australia's Melbourne's Michael Zarafa, Ed Islandi Lada working out here in Las Vegas. And we appreciate Ed Islandi Lada working out for all of you. He can go ahead and depart. You want to come up? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest that I think is one of the brightest minds analytically in the sport, a man who has... I mean, what an outstanding career that he had. I know that one day he will be enshrined into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, a man who has gone ahead and has went in there and fought the likes of Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, beat Adrian Broner, also Adrian Granado says, well, anytime this man was in a matchup, he always gave you your money's worth and then some residing in Las Vegas. You can listen to him on his outstanding podcast, the Porterway Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former welterweight champion of the world, Showtime, Sean Porter. What's up, Sean? I, I know you're doing double duty with your podcast, but also it's great to see you and, and talk with you. A new day is dawning when it comes to boxing with PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundoram, uh, you know, Keith Thurman, a man that you know quite well. He got injured. Now replace him with Sebastian Fundoram. Your thoughts on this main event? I'll tell you what, my, my, my colleague, uh, the Porter Way Podcast, Ant, he got more excited when he saw the switch and it became Sebastian Fundor. I think from a stylistic standpoint, we could have a slightly more exciting fight. I think the fight with Keith Thurman was very intriguing. Uh, obviously, I was I was on record for thinking that Keith was going to win that fight. I think now I think we know like what truly where his health is in terms of his physical abilities now. But you know we got Sebastian Fundora, a guy that's tall, very capable of uh, of dethroning uh, Tim Zhu and taking him off this hot win streak that he's been on. So um, I, I think the main event is just as exciting. Uh, maybe even more exciting than, than the original. And uh, looking forward to, to boxing on Prime. I, just, I think this is it's prime time, man. It's time for, for something big, and I think Prime is the next best thing. Is it crazy to think that this is going to be the largest height disparity in a non-heavyweight matchup? I mean, nine inches that Tim Zhu is going to be giving up to his opponent in Sebastian Fundora. All respect, but I did that in my sleep. <laughs> I, I, I've I fought at these kind of deficits for a long time. So it's honestly, it's easy for me to see where Tim Zhu can have success, uh, can possibly KO Fondora, but also where I can see him having some, some struggles. I think uh, one thing we know about Fondora is he's kind of right there in your face. So for, for Tim, it's always about getting past those first couple of punches. Fandor more than likely is going to be first the entire <laughs> the entirety of the fight. So I think um, we're going to have to see something new for Tim. Uh, how explosive can he be as a counter puncher? How explosive can he be slipping and coming in and the leaving shots and then and then returning his own? So again, I mean, when you talk about the the style matchup here and you talk about how exciting and how action packed this main event is going to be, it's, it's uh, bar none at this point. Is it going to be one of those things for Sebastian Fundoro that he has to be disciplined and utilize that height, that reach advantage? We know he likes to mix it up. 
But in a fight like this, with not just one world title, but two world titles on the line, that he must remain disciplined. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about Fundor, what, what have you done for me lately? Well, I got knocked out lately, you know. So everybody's looking at how is he going to come back from the Brian Mendoza knockout? Is he still healthy? Is he still fresh? You know, what, 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 what changes is he going to make in his game now? To his credit, he was winning that fight until he got stopped, until, until the knockdown. And so it, the thing is really like not so much what do I change, but how do I become, to your point, more, um, uh, more disciplined in certain areas. And I, I think really the, the only thing that Sebastian, for me, I think needs to change in his great game is he needs a little bit better defense. You know, the chin cannot be up in the air after you – throw your shots, you know, and you have to have uh, better ways of escaping opposed to just moving straight back and, and then moving laterally, you know what I mean? So uh, I think that um, this has the makings to be a really exciting fight, and I think it's a 50-50 fight, to be honest with you. I think at the end of the day, I'm looking at Tim Zhu pulling it off, but it's 50-50. Well, from 154 to 140, Rolando Rolly Romero defending his WBA Super Lightweight Championship against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. This one very well could steal the show, but I think a couple questions coming into this matchup. For Romero, how much bigger is he going to be than that of Isaac Cruz? He's going to be bigger. <laughs> uh, Rolly is someone who uh, did not shy away from eating food uh, when he wasn't in training camp, but the thing I've seen from Rolly is he's got a lot of mass, got a lot of muscle, you know. So cutting into that muscle to get to 135, you're no longer cutting into that muscle, which means you're going to be stronger. Uh, you're even mentally going to be stronger because you feel fresher mentally. You, I, I have an extra five pounds now, you know. So I think overall he's just going to be the bigger, stronger guy on fight night. Pitbull, not a very tall kid. Uh, he's got, you know, some mass of his own as well. Uh, punches with a lot of power. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I do think that the, the co-main is going to steal the show until something crazy happens in the main event. Well, the social media standpoint, there's a photo floating around of Isaac Cruz, and he looks in the best shape that we've ever seen him. So on that sort of thought process, it could appear that Isaac Cruz is going to try to set forth a frenetic pace and keep it on Romero throughout the entirety of the 12 rounds if it goes the distance. Probably the hardest fight to predict in terms of how the outcome is going to be. But the easiest fight to predict in terms of how Isak Cruz is going to come all night. He's coming right after Roly. I mean, corner to corner, uh, rope to rope. And Roly's really going to have to keep him off with the jab and then show that power that he's shown in the past. You know, uh, I think there's something we always say in boxing. The power is the last thing to go. So it doesn't matter what you've been through in the ring. It doesn't matter... Uh, who you are now that if you close your eyes and you still got that punch, you know, so I think this one's going to be really exciting. I think something crazy is going to happen in this one. And uh, the co-main is definitely going to be probably the most fun fight to watch of the night. Romero has stated he's going to knock out Isaac Cruz. Now, if he can somehow pull this off, how much would that send shockwaves throughout the 140 pound division? That's the, that's the, see, that's the thing. When you talk about knocking out Isaac Cruz, the dude can take a punch. What, what, what are you going to knock him out with? You know what I mean? So I, I don't know, man. I think to that point, Roley has a punch. We know that. But it, I think what Isak is going to take more than one. And um, we'll see what happens. When your opponent takes your best shot, it makes you question a lot of things, you know, and it, it'll stop you from throwing that best shot again. Uh, that's the thing that Roley cannot afford to do. He can't afford to release his best punch, Isak take it, and then now he shies away from it, you know. He's got to Keep letting that big shot go. And uh, the, thing, uh, the thing for Roley is he doesn't have to look for Isak Cruz. A lot like Fundora is going to be right in, 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 in the face of Sebastian, uh, excuse me, in front of the face of Tim Zhu. Uh, Isak is going to be right in, in the face of, uh, of Roley Romero. So, uh, you know, two exciting fights in the main and the co-main and, and a really good undercourt too. Well, you got Edislandi Lotto, who's back, 40 years of age, taking on Michael Zarafa. Zarafa representing Australian, two Australians fighting for world titles. That could be significant from a global standpoint when it comes to their boxing history. Listen, uh, I've touched uh, Australian soil, I think, four times now. And uh, I think I, I took some, some blessings over there, man. These guys have been really uh, letting go and, and letting loose and, and showing themselves well. Tim Zhu uh, on, the, on top of all of that for Australia. But for, for Zarafa to come over here, and I just 
spoke with Nonito Donaire uh, on my podcast, and he's saying, yo, we, we're, I know we got to surprise the world, you know, but we're not afraid of that. And more than anything, he's been working with Zarafa's mental. That's the thing we know about, about uh, Lara. You, got, you can't outthink Lara. So stop thinking. Just go for it and go get it, you know. So uh, that's what Nonito said they did. They, they're not go, go going into the ring to think. They're going into the ring to, to fight and win every single round. And uh, he said they're pre prepared for a, a uh, landslide victory, which I like because that means we're going to get somebody who's going to push Lara. A lot of times he sits back and he picks you apart and it becomes this dry fight. You, we need somebody that's going to really push Lara and bring the best out of him. And I know in, in Lara's last fight, he got a crazy knockout in the last one. So moving up to 160, we see that he's got power at 160. So, you know, top to bottom, we got a really great card. You got Julio Cesar Martinez, Angelino Cordova, flyweight. It's always very exciting. And talk about kicking off the card with a fight that you know is going to produce a lot of fireworks. And guys, let's just say they're going to need whoever's counting punches is going to have their work cut out for them. Yeah, I think this one is it's not on the, the, the pay-per-view portion. It is on the pay-per-view portion. The, okay, so this, this fight is on the pay-per-view portion, but that's one of those fights where I, I always like to say, if you're in a casino and you see a fight happening, that fight right there, Martinez and, and Cordova, that fight will make you stop and wonder what's going on. I need to watch this, and it could get you going and, and entice you to buy the entire car. So uh, that one is one I think you should have took that off of the, the pay-per-view card and, and put it on, on, on the regular portion just so that people walking past bars, people walking in the casinos could see what's going on, and, and it would entice them. That fight until it ends is going to be nonstop action-packed. But that one's going to be fun. I know you've been to Australia. You were there for Tim Zhu and, and Brian Mendoza. Brian Mendoza is back in action, taking on Sergei Bohachuk. With what you saw out of Brian Mendoza, now he's on a bounce-back fight mode against Sergei Bohachuk, who was supposed to fight Sebastian Fundora, now enter Brian Mendoza. I think from a stylistic standpoint, it serves both men to more to their advantages. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sergei is a, a come-ahead, come-at-you come kind of guy, about six-foot tall-ish. And, uh, and he's got a punch. I think 23 knockouts, uh, 23 wins, all of them by knockout. And then Men Brian, it's something that Tim didn't allow him to do. Brian is a thinker. Brian likes to set you up, and he likes to capitalize after he sets you up. So I think, um, I think uh, Sergei's definitely going to give him those opportunities to, to, to set some things up. And Sergei's going to come out there and give everybody what they want, an action-packed fight. You know? So both these guys, stylistically, that's a really good matchup too. Do an amazing job covering the sport on the Porterway podcast. What can fans expect during this fight week when they tune in or watch you on YouTube? I always like to say, man, we, we give you the boxing with, with a different delivery. You know what I mean? We, we add some fun to it. We add some pizzazz to it. Uh, we've had some rappers on recently. We've, we've had some comedians on recently. And that's what we just keep trying to pour out. Make sure that you understand that this boxing game it's a sport, but it's a sport that's supposed to entertain. And so that's what the Porterway podcast is we're trying to do, bring more entertainment to the sport of boxing. Well, we're going to see if Tim Zhu can provide some entertainment to the fans here in Australia and here in Las Vegas and in Australia as well. Sean, greatly appreciate the time, and we look forward to seeing all your covers throughout the week. Got it, man. We'll talk soon. Showtime, Sean Porter, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of that in-depth look, let's take a closer examination on what Tim Zhu is doing to prepare for battle. Coming up on Saturday, it is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Yeah, man. I'm excited for you. This car is an absolute blast. We are in the beautiful Ferrari 48 GTB. Let's go out there and have some fun, okay? Flying throttle, shift up. Merge left, shift up. Nice job. Beautiful, man. Fun. Oh, that's crazy. Open up that wheel and accelerate. Look easy, look easy. Got it. Remember, in the trunk, we want to be a little bit patient, okay? Tim Zhu, his moniker is Soul Taker. I think he needs to change that to Risk Taker. from Zhu. Major moments for the Australian world champion. I like challenges. I like things that get your heart beating, you know? Don't forget to breathe, all right? <laughs> How cool is that, brother? That's sick. I'm not satisfied. I'm still looking for that next thrill, that next big fight, the next adrenaline rush. It's, it's a crazy, addictive feeling. The undefeated super welterweight champion of the world, Tim Zoo. I feel like I'm a lion chasing a gazelle. In a boxing fight, um, it's a different type of competitiveness. 
you see you see the pain in their eyes or you see a little a noise their little squeak that they make that's 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 the stuff that that drives me as a boxer how important is activity cuz nowadays people you know, fight once a year maybe so yeah man that's that's the thing everyone these days they they're just a bunch of pussies especially in this sport now they're just like they're going downhill there's more twitter battles rather than boxing fights and it's like I'm the other way around I'm a fighter an old school throwback type thing and, and I feel like you know the the real boxing uh lovers uh will embrace that so that is none other than Tim Zhu he has been training very hard here in Las Vegas getting ready for his showdown against now Sebastian Fundoram. You heard me break it down with Sean Porter, a nine inch height advantage for Fundoram and for Fundoram, a late replacement. Originally supposed to fight Sergei Boachuk, now insert Sebastian Fundoram. As, as we take a look at both men, you know that Tim Zhu is looking to pick up the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World as well. So two world championships will be on the line. Tim Zhu defending his WBO Super Welterweight Championship against Sebastian Fundoram. Meantime, for Fundoram, he's in bounce back mode. He came up short against Brian Mendoza in his last assignment, but now he has an opportunity to pick up not only one world title, but two world championships. And the winner of this fight certainly will put themselves in line in the driver's seat. Now for Tim Zhu, it's a couple of things that you got to look at. Not only is he fighting and also him headlining here in Las Vegas for the first time, but there has been talk from Terrence Crawford that he wants to come up here to 154, and you got to think about Tim Zhu believing, if I'm able to get past this guy in Sebastian Fundoran, could that be a showdown later this year against Terrence Crawford? And that is a significant financial opportunity for Tim Zhu if he's able to beat Sebastian Fundoran. Originally, Tim Zhu was supposed to collide against the former welterweight champion of the world in Keith Thurman. Thurman got hurt, so therefore you go ahead and you enter in none other than Sebastian Fundora. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we're getting ready for our next fighter that is getting... So we go ahead and get ready to bring up a man who's very well known in the business, uh, you know, done a lot for Mayweather Promotions and has been the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. I believe he's around here somewhere. I want to bring up the esteemed Leonard Ellerby, ladies and gentlemen. He is... He knows what it's like to be involved in uh, not just big events, but pay-per-view blockbuster events, ones that shatter records. Leonard, how many records does uh, Floyd Mayweather and Mayweather Promotions have? The, what, the top three, top four gate receipts all over the world? Six out of ten. Yeah, that's pretty, ten. <laughs> I would say that that's, uh, there's a reason why Floyd's in the Hall of Fame and you've been doing such a phenomenal job. But you are coming into Saturday night with the vested interest. You have Rolando Roli Romero against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Roli Romero, a polarizing figure in the sport. How much fun has he been to be able to go and sort of help guide his career? Um, he's a phenomenal young fighter. Really excited about this Saturday night. He has a big opportunity in front of him. And again, I expect him to handle his business and... I expect the fight to end in a knockout with Roley knocking him out. How much would that send shockwaves throughout the sport of boxing, Leonard? Well, it, Roley's coming in. He's the underdog in this fight, which I love that. I love that he's the underdog because all the pressure's on the other guy. And all he has to do is go in there and figure out a way to win a fight. And he's in a wonderful position. With everything that you particularly have done in your career, when you're around this, does it ever get old? Never. I love boxing. Eat, sleep, and drink it. Love it. Love it. Now, with PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video for the first time, how big is this? I mean, we got a big main event, literally and figuratively, with a 9 inch height advantage for Fundora, but for boxing in general, being on Prime Video, how big is this? It's a wonderful opportunity. 
not only for the PBC, but for the fans around the world. Uh, it's giving the fans a, a great opportunity to see what this is all about. And for the first event being on Amazon Prime with a tremendous platform, one of the biggest platforms in the entire world, I'm super excited. When they came to you and they said, okay, Rolando Romero against Isaac Cruz co-main event, we all know that that could be a main event anywhere around the world. But, you know, in terms of your ability to say, you know what, absolutely co-main event, no problem, let's do it. Yeah, why not? Uh, again, it's a tremendous car, really from top to bottom. And the fans are the winners in this because, again, from the opening bout to the main event, number fireworks. How about this? Every fight on the pay-per-view is a world championship fight. Every yeah. single one of them, yeah. from flyweight all the way to 160. And again, it's another great opportunity for the PBC, who puts on the biggest and best cards in the entire sport for the fans. Now, for Romero, I, I believe I was watching an interview because I, you know, I, I love consuming everything in boxing. Uh, Roley seems to be very happy here at 140 because he's not cutting to 35. But I believe you said. I don't know when, but down the line, you could very well see a case where Roley goes up to 147. Yes, we actually have talked about that. But first things first, he has, he has to take care of business this Saturday night, and that's all the focus is, is Isaac Pitbull Cruz. For Isaac Cruz, I've seen, I don't know if you saw the photo that's circulating on social media of him, but he looks to be in the best shape possible that I've ever seen him. I mean, he's got a six pack and, and everything, looks in incredible physical shape. Do you expect to see an Isaac Cruz is gonna try to set forth this incredible pace throughout the 12 rounds if it goes that long? Of course, because he only fights one way. He comes forward, he's a very aggressive fighter, and Roley just has to be able to control him, keep the distance, and handle the business. Speaking of business, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about another man in Tank Davis. And, you know, there's a lot of people talking about what could be next for Tank. We've heard rumblings, but nothing official as of yet. Uh, not necessarily giving away anything, but when was the last time you talked to Tank and how is he doing? I mean, how's life been for the world champion? Well, he's in camp right now um, and he's, he's spending a little time with his, with his daughters. Um, but he's just getting ready for his huge event he has coming up in a couple months. And he'll make the big announcement who, when, and where. I'm sure he's very excited to be fighting here with PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video as well. Yes, he is, because he knows this is a wonderful opportunity. In my opinion, he's the face of boxing, and it's another opportunity for him to go out there and showcase his skills. Now, you also, I believe, I, I don't know if he's 17, 18 yet, but tell us about some of your youngsters that you have within the Mayweather Promotion Stable. Kermel Moten, he'll be fighting also on the undercard of this fight, will actually be the walkout bout after the main event. So he's an exciting young fighter. He's one of the top prospects in the entire sport. But we have quite a few, though, in Mayweather Promotions. Um, Jaleel Hackett, Joseph Brown, just to name a few that are really, really excited. They have big, bright futures ahead of them. When you guys sign them and, and they are in training camp, because I you love going to the gyms, and I know you pop into the gym and you go and watch them train. When they come to you and ask you, and they, and they ask Floyd as well, like, what's it like under the lights? How much is that just so beneficial because you guys have been at the top level of the sport for many years and then some? Well, yes, when they have been around the sport and when they turn pro, they've seen all the big events. And so they trust the process. They know that we've been in a position to take a young fighter to the top, like Tank, and excel. And with other veteran fighters, we've been able to do that too. So these are, this is a wonderful time now for the young fighters in the sport. And again, I'm just really excited what lies ahead. You know what else I'm excited about is you are a fun follow on social media. I love how bold you are when it comes to your predictions and everything else. I'm like, man, oh, man, uh, very entertaining, I'm sure. And I know you get fight fans uh, riled up one way or another when it comes to social media. I love, I love being able to interact with the fans. That's what it's all about. You know, when I have a little free time, you know, we'll, I'll go back and forth with them sometime. But I really enjoy it, though. We enjoy your expertise, Leonard. Always a pleasure. Good luck to Roley on Saturday. Thank you, Ray. Leonard Ellerby, ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. He has been involved in blockbuster events right now. We are going to take more of an in-depth look at Leonard Ellerby, the man that he helps to guide in Rolando, Roley Romero, in the Gloves Off series.
Papá. ¿Eh? Uno, dos. Estamos bien. Ah, ok. Tú tienes que sentir que lo tira. Vamos. Esa. I started training with Salas November 2015. I learned a lot, you know, when I was with him, right? And um, we went our separate ways. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm happy I'm back with him because in reality, I don't think I should have left to begin with. I, I feel like when I did train with Salas, like I was, it was like there was something new I learned every single day, you know? And even as now, you know, I'm still learning every single day, you know? Mírame los hombros. Uno, recojo, dos, y ya cargo. Hall of Fame trainer Ismael Salas has long turned Cuban exiles into boxing machines of technical prowess. And while discipline might not be the first word associated with Romero, in the ring, opposite a pit bull, it's the exact approach he must take. I believe. Uh, Rolly is still now. He got much to move forward. Uno, recoge, do, y pam, pam. But it depends how we can click and bring him at the top at the right time. Tú estás llevando la fuerza para adelante, lo que yo quiero. Salas, you know, fixing some things that, like, technically that I used to do, you know, that I, ain't, that I haven't been doing recently. I need to go back to just doing basic fundamental things. Salas is very patient, just having me do all the little footwork things. Gira, gira, gira. Oíste, esto es un juego. Esto no es verdad de boceo. Esto es juego. Salas knows exactly how to train me. Uno, dos. Deja la maniquel de adelante. My main point with Rolly will be in this fight, his explosion. He got aggression but we will bring explosion. This is make a big difference. Siéntate, sube la mano, cojones, que te va a tirar para atrás. Esa. Man, the genius. But if there was somebody I owe all my success to, in the ring, out the ring, as a man, as a person, my morals, everything, it all goes to my dad. My dad got to the United States January 6th, 1994. He was born in Cuba. Oxtail, I love oxtails. Man, he's trying to copy me today. He's trying to get oxtails too. He want to be just like me. He want to look like me. When I started boxing, I didn't know how much money I made or any of that stuff, you know, because I didn't really care. I just came into the gym just to prove something to my dad, you know? My dad was a little crazy, you know? He's calm now, but, yeah, he would be in fights every day. My dad was really hard on me, like, when I mean, like, my whole childhood, every, like, he made me who I am. Here is a little community of Cuban, and we get Cuban, old people, young people. You know, it's, it's a nice... Community Cuban place. We got champions in the house. Got a little Cuban food. Rolly, la amenaza. I really do appreciate the Cuban community for getting behind me and everything, you know? No, everybody loves me, you know, so they show me love everywhere I go. You don't say in K keep with it. Ustedes todo, todo tan contra mí. Yo no sé qué está pasando ahora. You'll see it here with Day of the Fight. This play will be packed. Screaming and yelling and Fun. Are you ready? Sí, no, claro. Don't disappoint me. I'm gonna play. Man, I'm gonna build my own house on you. I want to give you guys a Mexican slugfest, and I'm gonna go at him. And because he's not gonna be able to take all the punishment from a real puncher. Knockout. Cold. He's already on the top level, but you know, he's gonna put his name out there. I know for sure. I only sabía que tú sabías hablar inglés. The American dream, I mean. I don't know, I'm living my dream. I'm not living an American dream, I'm living my dream. And I know for a fact I'm living his dream as well. And the winner is Ronnie Romero! Oh, fuck. All right, let's start, let's...
All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet this man's adversary with the record of 25 wins, two losses, one draw, 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Having most recently defeated the previously unbeaten Giovanni Cabrera back in July, he is one of the most exciting fighters in the sport. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Mexico City, introducing Isaac Pitbull Cruz. It is Isaac Pitbull Cruz, great to see from Mexico City. Isaac, you get another opportunity at a world title, this one at 140 pounds. What does this mean to you? Bueno, ¿qué significa para ti tener esta oportunidad en la 140 libras de pelear por el título por primera vez? Es una emoción muy grande y muy contento por esa segunda oportunidad y venimos a aprovecharla y a darle una gran pelea a toda la gente. It's a big second chance, a very important second chance. And I came to give the people what they want, a great fight, and I want to come out on top. Rolly Romero has stated he's going to knock you out. How do you respond to that? Rolly, Rome Rolly Romero ha dicho que te quiere noquear, que te va a noquear. ¿Cómo le respondes a eso? Eh, está bien, yo vengo preparado, no voy a subir amarrado de las manos y vengo muy preparado para, para también venir a noquear a él. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to come out with my hands tied. I'm going to be ready for whatever he wants to do. One thing that people are wondering is how are you going to handle this new weight class? You're going up to 140, but what has that transition been like? How has camp been like knowing that you don't have to make the 135 pound limit? ¿Cómo ha sido la transición a una nueva división, un peso que es superior al 135? ¿Cómo te has sentido en esa transición a un nuevo peso y en el condicionamiento del entrenamiento? Eh, fue una adaptación muy buena con el equipo de trabajo, lo fuimos trabajando muy bien y nos sentimos muy fuertes para esta gran pelea. It's been great. I couldn't have a better team to work with. We have done an outstanding job getting ready and we're going to be in tip-top shape for this fight. Well, speaking of tip-top shape, we saw a photo that's circulating on social media. Is it fair to say that this is the best in shape you've ever been heading into a fight? Hablando de estar en gran forma física, se hubo una foto en las redes sociales que circuló, se hizo viral. ¿Se podría decir que estás en la mejor forma física de tu vida actualmente? Sí, totalmente. Ahora sí que se hizo un buen trabajo con el equipo de trabajo con el en Ciudad de México con el preparador, mi papá, el equipo de trabajo y esta ha sido una de las mejores o si no es la mejor de, de toda la carrera. Absolutely. You could say that perhaps this has been the best training camp of my career and that's all due to the work that I put in with my dad and the whole staff that has been here supporting me all the way. Now because this is such a massive opportunity for you, your second go around, do you feel any additional pressure to go ahead and really go out there and put forth a definitive performance to leave no doubt in the eyes of the judges. Esta es una gran oportunidad para vos. La segunda oportunidad, ¿sentís más presión de salir y noquear, de no depender de los jueces? No, de ninguna manera. Yo no trabajo bajo presión. Yo trabajo en lo que estuvimos haciendo en el campamento y esta noche nos venimos a consagrar y a coronar como campeones del mundo. I don't work under pressure. Pressure means nothing to me. I work based on, on the fundamentals that I have ever since we started training camp. I came here to be a world champion, period. Finally, what do you want to say to all the fans that are watching around the world and here in Las Vegas? Por último, ¿qué le gustaría que tú gustaría decirle a la gente que te está viendo en Las Vegas y alrededor del mundo? ¿Qué mensaje les das? Eh, que el próximo sábado 30 de marzo nos vamos a coronar como campeones del mundo y que yo de mi parte les vengo a dar una gran pelea y que ellos, toda la gente sea la ganadora. We're going to give you a great fight on Saturday, March 30th. I'm going to be a world champion and the true winners of the night are going to be the fans that are right here. Ladies and gentlemen from Mexico City, Isaac Pitbull Cruz.
And Isaac Pitbull Cruz going to work out for all of you ahead of his showdown against Rolando. Roly Romero, it is the co-made event. A PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. It comes your way at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Tickets are available at AXS.com. Or you could watch PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Isaac Cruz, Rolando, Roly Romero for the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Inside the ring right now, Isaac Pitbull Cruz, the fans showing him such support. And I'm sure that will fuel him on a Saturday against Rolando Roly Romero, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. As we appreciate the time from Mexico City Zone, Isaac Cruz, he will now depart and make his way to talk with the rest of the media members. As we have so many media members from around the world, a lot of Australian media as well, media from Mexico City, and uh, very much an international event that comes your way on a Saturday. It is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time. The event promoted by TGB Promotions, made event promoted in association with No Limit Boxing, as you see, Isaac Cruz meeting the fans, very much beloved by fight fans. And you see that the passion and how much of a, you know, he wants to go ahead and meet all the fans before he gets ready to dive further into fight week. Great to see Samson Lukwitz as well, who no doubt has a vested interest in our main event, being the promoter of Sebastian Fundora. We will talk with one half of our co-main event coming up in a few moments, but you are watching Isaac Cruz just there and immersing himself in fight week. He fought here in July at T-Mobile Arena where he was victorious over Giovanni Cabrera. As you see how much the attention that he has garnered. I remember 
when Manny Pacquiao fought Jordanis Ugas in his final fight, where Isaac Cruz, who is promoted by Manny Pacquiao and MP Promotions, came here to the MGM Grand to see his promoter fight, and he was sort of, he went unnoticed, and then a few months later, he would go on to fight Gervonta Tank Davis, and since that point on, he has been very much beloved, and um, I would have to say a cult-like following that Isaac Cruz has, and his popularity only continues to soar. And what a moment for him when he steps inside the ring on Saturday night against Rolando Roley Romero. PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video, four world championship fights. We'll start off with Julio Cesar Martinez defending his WBC flyweight crown against Angelino Cordova of Venezuela. Then it'll be the American dream. That is Landy Lada defending his WBA middleweight championship against Melbourne, Australia's Michael Zarafa. Co-main event, you heard. Rolando Roli Romero and Isaac Cruz. Romero defending his WBA super lightweight championship of the world. And then in our main event, it'll be Tim Zhu defending his WBO super welterweight championship against the towering inferno Sebastian Pundora. Also on the line, the vacant WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. But we have Sebastian Fundora, who will be making his way into the ring here in a few short moments. But right now, as we get ready to hear from Sebastian Fundora, very curious to see and, and also hear from Tim Zoom with this being his first fight here in Las Vegas. It's different when you fight here in Las Vegas. This is what you dream about. This is what you work your entire life for, to get to this particular moment. And now for Tim Zhu, it is upon us. What I think is going to help out Tim Zhu in terms of adaptability is the fact that he has been training here in Las Vegas for some time. He goes back and forth and had a tremendous run in Australia last year, defeating the likes of Brian Mendoza and a Tony Harrison, but the fact that he trains here, he's acclimated himself here, and originally supposed to collide against Keith Thurman. Thurman had to pull out of the fight due to injury, but Sebastian Fundota got switched, and he was originally supposed to fight Sergei Boachuk, but now is the assignment for none other than a Tim Zhu. And Right now, I want to take a closer look at the Gloves Off series featuring Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Cuando ya tiene fecha de pelea, a uno como esposa sí le entra un, un nervio, porque pues sabemos que son golpes al fin y al cabo y pues ni Dios lo quiera puede pasar algo, ¿no? Entonces sí empieza un nervio, una ansiedad. En ese aspecto es difícil. Tuvimos un inicio de pareja muy, muy duro. No, no teníamos algo estable. Prácticamente de todo un año que tuvimos que remar contra corriente. No teníamos dónde vivir, ¿no? Había veces que se nos dificultaba hasta para la alimentación. Pues no había dinero, entonces este, pues este fue muy complicado. Yo como el hombre de la casa no tenía, llegó un momento, un punto donde no tenía que ofrecerles tan siquiera una tortilla, ¿no? Es que yo... Son muchos recuerdos de cuando la pasamos mal. Cuando este, pues la pasamos difícil. Pues sí, son recuerdos muy, muy difíciles. Desgraciadamente se quedan muy marcados esos recuerdos por los momentos difíciles, que a pesar de eso, pues fueron unas pruebas muy, muy, muy duras en nuestra persona, en nuestra relación y como pareja que, que Dios nos mandó para ver si realmente éramos uno para el otro o como quien dice, no, nada más nos interesaba lo, lo material, lo económico o lo físico, ¿no? Pues gracias al, al apoyo de mi esposa, 
pues para que se fijara y pudiéramos hacer algo en el boxeo y poder despuntar la carrera. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet one half of our main event on Saturday. This man will be looking to become the WBO Super Welterweight and the WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World. 20 wins, one loss, one draw. 13 wins coming by way of knockout. 26 years of age from Coachella, California, standing nearly six feet, six inches tall. He has been engaged in some memorable matchups, including the 2022 Fight of the Year against Erickson Lubin. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundura. Here he is with his promoter, Samson Lukowitz, as well. Sebastian, it is great to see you. Welcome to Fight Week, and my goodness, a huge opportunity for you. You were supposed to be fighting Sergei Bogachuk, but instead, Keith Thurman unable to fight. You get the call. How long did it take for you to say yes when they said you want a main event against Tim Zhu? It took us like a millisecond. We were ready for that opportunity. You know, we were already fighting for the WBC vacant. Uh, they threw in the WBO. It was an opportunity we couldn't pass over. In terms of you in, in this, a, a huge opportunity, a Tim Zhu, you're going to have a nine-inch height advantage, the largest height difference in a non-heavyweight championship fight. What does that mean to you? That's just an everyday thing for me. You know, I'm always taller than everybody, so this is just another day of work. In terms of preparation, um, what was it like being able to go from Bohachuk to now Tim Zhu? They're both similar. You know, uh, Bohachuk being a little bit taller, of course, but uh, other than that, we have a, a pressure, hard-hitter, orthodox fighter in Tim Zhu, the same with Bohachuk. Does it make any difference? I mean, you've been in main events before, but now Timo Arena in Las Vegas, does it have any extra added meaning to you? This is a big fight. You know, this is the first for Amazon Prime Video working with PVC, so this is going to be the opener. The opener for, for boxing in, of the future. You know, this is a streaming platform as well, so this is very big. T-Mobile, Las Vegas, the fighting capital of the world. This is where I stamp uh, the start of my legacy. The, first, the last fight that you had did not go your way. How much did you learn from that? More of a learning experience. It was a, a reminder. You cannot play this sport. You cannot make mistakes. And uh, if you do, you, you pay for it. Do you believe that there's going to be at some point where you guys are going to be standing in the center of this ring and just go toe-to-toe -to -toe at T-Mobile Arena? Of course, of course. This is a unified uh, 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 fight at 154. This is the best fight at 154. This is going to crown the new king of 154. Now, there has been talk that Terrence Crawford, from what we hear with the WBO, has been, you know, the number one mandatory at 154 if he wants to come up to this weight class. That would mean if Tim Zhu is victorious, then he might be in line to fight Terrence Crawford. Do you think that he could be overlooking you? Of course, you know, we I'm, I, I don't really care what Tim Su does. I'm focused on this fight right here. This is how I become a world champion. What would it mean for you to realize a lifelong dream? Your sister's a world champion, but to go ahead and be a world champion and when you hear and the new. Well, this, is, this is a dream come true. The fact that I'm fighting on a stage like this and an event like this, this is pay-per-view, main event in Las Vegas, Team Over Arena. This is a dream come true. What does your father and your entire family mean to you? Your father, obviously, your, his, your trainer, and he will be leading you in a battle on Saturday. This is big. This is big. My father got his first world champion with my sister six months ago. We're going to do it again this Saturday. Uh, this is, he's going to be coach of the year, for, in my eyes, of course. And also your promoter, Samson Lukwitz, how much of a, you know, him being such a guiding factor in your career? He's been telling me over and over again, when we become world champion, that's what's going to get him the Hall of Fame this Saturday. 
Get ready, Samson, because you're going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Samson, when you hear that, that he's going to stamp your induction into the Hall of Fame, what's your response? Well, I'm, <laughs> listen, I, I'm so happy, and uh, Sebastian Fundora, as his family, is my family. We go into my kitchen, and I go to his kitchen, so we have a special relation, and I'm so happy for this opportunity. By the way, he said that it took in two seconds to take the fight. It's not, it's not true. It took one second. One second. <laughs> Sebastian will allow you to work out finally. What can all the fans expect on Saturday when you collide against Tim Zhu? March 30th, uh, tune in. It's going to be a great fight. We're going to have another Fundora Crown as champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Towering Inferno, Sebastian Fundora working out here in Las Vegas ahead of his showdown against Tim Zhu, the main event. PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Working out, ladies and gentlemen, the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora. Sebastian Fundora looks to capture two world championships and follow in the footsteps of his sister, Gabriela Fundora, who became a world champion six months ago. They're trained under the guidance of their father, Freddy Fundora, who is in the ring as well, an outstanding trainer. We have the Tower Inferno, Sebastian Fundora, representing Coachella, California. And it is great to see Sebastian Fundora. Sebastian, great to see you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you so much.
so much. Thank you. And uh, thank you for everybody that came out, all the Vegas fans, all the fans from California, all the Mexican fans, all the Australian fans. Uh, tune in for a great fight um, the 30th of March. Do what he tells you. It's about Fundora, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we appreciate him working out for all the fans and those watching around the world on the BBC YouTube page. Six foot six, looking to impose his will upon Australia's Tim Zhu on a Saturday. Well, as you see, Sebastian Fundora taking photos for the media and the fans here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, our proud host hotel. The fight goes down on Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time, T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. But we want to turn our attention on the co-main event. We were able to get comments from Isaac Pitbull Cruz, but what makes the WBA super lightweight champion of the world tick? Well, here is a closer in-depth look at Rolando Roley Romero. I'm not really a villain. I'm more of an anti-hero. A villain is doing evil things. Anti-hero, he's doing things for what's the best, right? Yeah, I'm not a villain. They just don't understand me. By that alone, you see that Rolly Romero is one of the most unique personalities in the sport of boxing. Never shy when it comes to cameras, always has such self-belief in himself and his abilities. And in his mind, he's going to put forth a definitive statement on Saturday night when he shares the ring with Isaac Pitbull Cruz. He's now back with his trainer in Ismael Salas. And you could tell that there is such a bond that Salas and Romero share together. Uh, with Romero, he trained with Salas for a while in the amateurs, and now they are once again reunited, and they believe that it is going to be a winning formula for both. Now, this man, in terms of the champion, he captured the world title when he was able to stop Ismail Barroso back last May. It was a fight that Romero had to dig deep, and Tony Weeks waved off the bout in that particular contest here in Las Vegas, but he shared the ring with Gervonta Tank Davis at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. What an event that was, but on Saturday night, he will be defending his WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome fighting out of right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the champion, Rolando Roli Romero. Great to see you, Rolando Roly Romero. How are you, sir? As he takes on Isaac Cruz on a Saturday night, the co-main event. Uh, Roly, what's this like for you fighting here at home in Las Vegas against Pitbull Cruz? I mean, it's always a blessing to be fighting my hometown, you know? I mean, I'm born and raised here. What has camp been like for you? A lot of water. <laughs> a lot of water. 140, Leonard Ellerby, your promoter, stated that, you know, you just, you've been able to eat, you seem very happy uh, during camp. Is that fair to say? I mean, I had some cheesecake today. You had cheesecake? I had some cheesecake, some blueberry cheesecake. Blueberry cheesecake. It was bomb. Was it? Yeah. 
Is it nice then to be able to indulge a little bit and not necessarily uh, suffer, you know, the typical tradition of having to cut weight in, in such a disciplined fashion? I mean, I was killing myself to make 35, like, real bad, you know, and it's been like that for a good minute, you know? I think even, like, since I won the first belt, I was suffering to make 35. So now at, at 140, have you thought about, you know, if you're successful on Saturday against Isa Cruz, about how long you want to remain here at 140 pounds? I want to go 47. You want to go to 47? Yeah, that's where all the fun is. But uh, would you want to do that next potentially? Yeah, I mean, sure, I'll go 47. I'll stay at 40. I'll do whatever. So, you, know I ain't ducking, no, you know I ain't ducking anybody. I go anywhere. I go after anyone. Well, right now on Saturday, you have Isaac Cruz in front of you. Do you believe that there's going to be that much of a size advantage in your favor because he's coming up here to super lightweight? Uh, he's a small guy. He's a small guy. I mean, he was big the other day, but he looks a little smaller now. So let's see. Have you seen the photo that's been circulating online of, you know, they showed his physique and he looks to be in the best shape of his career? You haven't seen that photo? Um, of Isaac Cruz? No. There's a photo of him circular that shows his physique, and he looks in great shape. The reason why I ask you that is because it would appear that he's going to be trying to set forth a very high pace on Saturday. Your thoughts? Uh, everyone can think about that until they get punched in the face by me, right? <laughs> Everybody slows down the second they get punched by me. Well, speaking of punching someone in the face, I don't want any part of that, but you have said that you are going to knock out Isaac Cruz and you're going to do it in explosive fashion. Leonard Ellerby, your promoter, believes the same way. Uh, why are you so confident that you're going to be the man to stop Isaac Cruz? I mean, this is the first motherfucker I don't got to go chase, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So do you think it'll be easier in the sense of that you can go ahead and, and take your time and, and set forth some traps? I don't even got set traps. He sets himself, he sets himself up for him. Shoot. I mean, let me ask you this. What do you think he's going to do? You think, he, you think he's going to go out there and try to box thinking he's Floyd or something? No. Or is he going to come in head first like he always does? I mean, it's going to be aggression from the opening part of the bell. Okay, so I don't got set traps. He's already set up. Being a part of the first PBC pay-per-view on Prime Card, what does that mean to you? I mean, it's a blessing, you know. I mean, I never thought as a kid I'd be backed by the biggest company in the world. Now, people want to know, what goes through the mind of Rolando Roley Romero during fight week? You are a unique personality. You beat to your own drum. What's going through the mind of Roley? Do you guys really want to know that? Well, as long as it's PG, this is, you know, there's a family audience here. Uh... I went to the restroom like, like at least 40 times today. Well, so you have your own way of cutting weight. Well, with that, we will. What do you want to tell the fans out there as they get ready to watch you fight on Saturday? I don't. I don't like water no more. Okay. He, well, you don't like water, so that's what Roly Romero is saying. Good luck to you, Roly. We look forward to talking with you d tomorrow during the press conference and seeing you at the weigh-in and then subsequently on fight night. Of course. I'll see you guys, uh, well, all week. Ladies and gentlemen, Rolando Roli Romero, round of applause for the WBA Super Lightweight Champion of the World. We have the champ in the ring working out, doing a little shadow boxing for the fans, putting on a show, and he's always dripped out incredibly. I love that chain that he has. That's, uh, that means he's making some pretty good uh, money there, Leonard, I would have to say. The man is doing well. Here's Rolando Roli Romero taking off the chain, so now you know it's getting serious. As he gets set to collide against Isaac Pitbull Cruz, Rolando Romero, look at how great a shape that he looks as he prepares for battle. And he could very well be giving us a preview of what might be or what Isaac Cruz is going to be waiting for. On Saturday, T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Tickets available at AXS.com, or you can purchase the pay-per-view. It is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Rolly Romero working out here in Las Vegas.
Inside the ring, ladies and gentlemen, we have Rolando Roly Romero working out as he prepares to defend his world championship against the Zog Pitbull Cruz. It all goes down Saturday night, PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. One thing about Roly Romero, you could tell that he enjoys the lights. He is not shy whatsoever. He was telling me as he was working out, I, I love his Air Force Ones. He said he's gonna try to throw some punches and not crease his shoes. Well, I think he's making enough to be able to buy quite a bit of shoes, but I understand his issues. Rolando Roly Romero with final preparations ongoing, going ahead and doing some shadow boxing as now he will put on his customary championship chain that he has. Roly has, let me bring you back, Roly. I, I love that chain, by the way. Let's take a look at that. This is unbelievable. If we can get a better look at that, you want to hold that. I don't like to hold another man's jewelry, but take a look at that. Uh, tell us and describe this piece, Roly. I mean... It's my belt. <laughs> so when you wear that on, you know, on a chain and you wear it around your neck, is that extra motivation for you uh, when you're in the gym and preparing, knowing uh, what you have to defend? Man, if this shit's your motivation, you shouldn't be doing this sport. So last May, when you became world champion, uh, what did that moment mean to you and how much has it changed your life? I mean, it meant the world to me. I mean, everyone's dream is to become champion, no, in boxing. But, I mean, the best still to come. So, we're still aiming for that. So, assuming everything goes your way on Saturday, have there been any names that you thought of that you'd like to share the ring with? I mean, you mentioned about going up to 47 or anything along those lines. Anybody particular or someone that you would like to uh, share the ring with? I mean, we got a firework fight on Saturday. You, you guys want to talk about other things? No. We're, um, you, you guys are going to see Saturday. It's going to be an explosion. It's going to be, a, it's gonna be, I'll be honest, the most entertaining fight this year. Really? Of the year? Of the year, by far. By far? It's an explosion. All right. Well, you heard it from Rolando Roli Romero predicting 
the fight of the year against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Smiling and enjoying fight week. Let's give it up for Rolando Roly Romero, ladies and gentlemen. See Roly and enjoying taking photos for the meeting that is assembled all over the world. We have media literally from all parts of the globe, from Australia, obviously, for the Tim Zhu Michael Zarafa connection from Mexico, the Doc Pitbull Cruz, and boxing media from around the globe that want to cover this loaded night of boxing, four world championship fights on our view. That's All right, so we continue with our grand arrivals and our workouts here. You see the media and the fans assembled here at the MGM Grand. We are right outside of the sports book, and what a time here in the United States. Obviously, we have March Madness, and we'll have Madness in the Ring on a Saturday with PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. As tickets are still available, if you're going to be here in Las Vegas, at AXS.com. And you're seeing Roly Romero talking with assembled media members that are covering Saturday night's event. And also, the event promoted by TGB Promotions. Main event is promoted in association with No Limit Boxing. The PBC on Prime Video Action will precede the pay-per-view and stream live and for free beginning at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. Rising unbeaten middleweight Elijah Garcia takes on veteran contender Kyron Davis in the main event. Super welterweight contenders Surrey Boachuk and Brian Mendoza meet for the uh, interim WBC Super Welterweight Championship that will open up the stream so you get a full night of boxing that comes your way on Saturday, T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time is when the action goes down. Four World Championship fights on our pay-per-view card. And also, when it comes to our opener on the streaming, we have one championship fight. So collectively, five World Championship fights that are going to be occurring on Saturday. Five of the six fights on a Saturday on our televised portion World Championship fights, I mean, that is unprecedented, and it means that the fighters that will be competing, all 10 fighters in those World Championship fights, that they have so much to gain, and what a way for PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video to kick off with a bang, and you know that every one of these fighters is wanting to put forth, and not just win their fights, but they want to be known as having the performance of the night. Rolly Romero telling me you are going to see the fight of the night and even when as far as to say it will be a fight of the year. You're going to see an explosion. Isaac Cruz very confident in his abilities. This will be his second time going after a world championship. For our main event you heard and you saw Sebastian Fundora working out again. A nine inch height advantage in favor of the challenger in Sebastian Fundorum. That is the biggest height difference in a non heavyweight fight in boxing history. So, how will Tim Zhu deal with the nine inch height advantage that Sebastian Fundora has? Plus, we have been talking about it at length in terms of what Tim Zhu has always wanted in his career. He is a massive star in boxing out in his home country of Australia as he is creating his own legacy. His father, Kostya Zhu, an unbelievable world champion. He fought here in Las Vegas. Now Tim Zhu gets that opportunity front and center on Saturday night as he will defend his WBO Super Welterweight Championship against a very determined and a very durable challenger in Sebastian Fundora. And now, 
Let's take a closer examination at an in-depth look at Tim Zhu. I do my training with my uncle, Eagle. He is my coach who started with me from the very day one. He taught me how to throw a jab to, to the position we're in now, uh, defending our WBO belt at the T-Mobile Arena. The passion and, and love for each other has always been there. Eagle has known me since a, since a young boy, since, since birth actually, so we don't need to say much. We just let our actions do the talking. I grew up in an environment where losing was not an option. My father is a great Australian sporting icon, Kostya Zhu. Uh, he was the undisputed champ, uh, defeated a lot of great world champions. Round two, Zab Buda. Everyone remembers the knockout. This is my dad back in the days. And his red style was real long. He used to be a bit flashy with his gold Rolex and his gold chains. <laughs> my dad grew up in a, a small Soviet little city, uh, Serov, Russia, 100,000 people. It was a mining town. And the fact that he came to Australia gave us life, gave us opportunity. And that's what boxing did. It, it really gave us everything. He always used to say, I'm the king of the world, and I'm the best. I'm the best. So there, there always, always used to be a belief. I grew up with that mentality, and it's something that I've just embraced as part of my life. I don't, I don't see my dad much these days. He lives in Russia, I live in Australia. Uh, we still talk, of course, all the time. As soon as I started my professional career, I wanted to become my own name, Tim Zhu, rather than Kostya's son. I'm in this sport, and it's me doing the punching, it's me doing everything, it's me doing the training, it's no one else. We're gonna be here, fighting. Pretty unreal, huh? I think we've reached to that point where, we, where people are saying, oh, you're, you're not Kostya's son, but he is Tim's dad. This should be made here. This should be made. Ladies and gentlemen, we now want to bring to the ring here in Las Vegas this man with a record of 24 wins, no losses, 17 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the son of the Hall of Famer Kostya Zhu. Last year in 2023, what an impressive one. Victories over Carlos Ocampo, Tony Harrison, and Brian Mendoza. He is the reigning and defending WBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World and looks to add the WBC Super Welterweight Championship to his collection. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Australia's boxing superstar. Here is the champion, the undefeated Tim Zoo. Well, ask and you shall receive. Tim, you've been talking about you are box office in Australia. Thousands of fans watched you beat the likes of Carlos Ocampo, Brian Mendoza, Tony Harrison. But you always said, in the midst of all that, I love my home country, but I want to fight Las Vegas. Not only you're fighting here in Las Vegas, but your main event team. Now that it's here, what's going through your mind? You know what? It's time to become a, a global star now. Uh, take over another continent, another... I feel, you know, I feel at home. I feel this is where I belong, you know? Looking at all these posters, this is, this is where I've always been uh, dreaming about. So I feel, I feel at peace. Do you feel that you training here in Las Vegas has made the transition easier? Oh, look, there's for sure you get a, a lot of experience here, you know, being based already like what my fourth fight, now, uh, fourth prep here. So uh, I'm quite used to everything. I'm quite used to the conditions. So everything's, everything's according to plan. The one item that, you know, I am very impressed by is that you are a throwback fighter. Originally, your adversary was supposed to be Keith Thurman. He got injured, therefore inserts Sebastian Fundora. 
He agreed immediately, and I feel like it didn't miss a beat for you to say, no matter who's in front of me, I want to fight on March 30th. I live by that word, you know, never retreat. I would never, I fear no one, you know, I'll go into any fight. Doesn't matter, two weeks, two week notice, 12 days, tall guy, whoever they put in front of me, man, just got to adapt, change, and uh, take over. Well, speaking of the height difference, a nine inch height advantage in favor of your opponent, Sebastian Fundora. That is the largest height difference in non heavyweight history. How are you prepared to handle that? Look, Mike Tyson did a lot of things in his, in his prime, so. Uh, hopefully I can uh, do a Mike Tyson on him. <laughs> also, not only, but you're defending your world championship, you have an opportunity to collect yet another world title. Does that add any extra meaning? Yeah, you know what? It's, a, it's another opportunity to, for greatness as well. Uh, in the record books would be the second unified family in the world to, to ever be in this position. So uh, for me, there's so much on the line. There's so much at stake. It's just a, a wonderful time to be alive. Well, talk about a wonderful time for Australian boxing in the sense that, you know, you also have Michael Zarafa at 160. He'll be the second fight on the pay-per-view, looking to become a world champion. You obviously defending your world title as well. But, I mean, how significant is this for Australian boxing here in Las Vegas? Yeah, I think it's great. You know, uh, both of us coming in and, uh, you know, we're, we're both going for, for world titles and, and, and it's a good time for Aussie boxing. Right now it's hot, red hot. Is it one thing for you not to just win, but to win in convincing fashion on Saturday? That's the only way, in convincing fashion, what I've always done. So the WBO has instituted Terence Crawford as the number one mandatory contender. With that potentially looming how difficult is it to not sort of see that there could be bigger blockbuster fights on the way, assuming you get your hand raised on Saturday against Sebastian Fundora? Yeah, I guess this is the drive, you know. You drive every day to that certain position where you want to fight for the, for the very, very top uh, pound for pound list, I guess, you know. And uh, yeah, the, the, en the opportunities are endless after this, but I'm solely focused right now, zoned in for, for one, one job ahead. Well, Sebastian Fundora is known as a very high contact, a very busy fighter. He loves to mix it up. Are you expecting a physically taxing, grueling fight? This will be a classic, you know? Like when we're talking about classics, something that's gonna be replayed forever, I'm hoping it's gonna be one of those. Leading off PBC's Voyage, PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video, and you are the headliner. You know, how do you feel with that? History. History right there, you know. I wasn't going to back out and, 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 and not, not let this opportunity just pass me. This, uh, this is a big moment, uh, and I'm glad to be doing it with PBC on board and everyone for making this happen. How much are you trying to enjoy fight week, but also, you know, remain focused on the task at hand? You know, you're cutting weight and you're doing all your fight week ritual that you have to do in order to get ready to step inside the ring on Saturday. Look, this is another day in the office. I've done it 24 times in the pro ranks. This is just the uh, 25th time. And this time it's a bit more enjoyable. I'm relaxed. Uh, I'm focused right now. I'm an eagle flying around. And uh, I'm going to be uh, going for that praise soon. All right. So on Saturday night, how is it going down, Tim? One way, KO. A knockout being predicted by Tim Zhu. Give it up for Australia's own, the WBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Tim Zhu, ladies and gentlemen. He will take photos inside the ring and make sure to get your camera phones out and whatever you need to get this photo of Tim Zhu, who will be defending his championship against Sebastian Fundora, predicting a knockout against the towering Inferno. Tim Zhu looks to remain undefeated. It is. PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Do not miss it. We are kicking off Fight Week with the bang here in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for the Grand Arrivals and the Media Workouts. We look forward to talking with you tomorrow during the press conference where you are here from all the fighters on behalf of Tim Zhu and all the fighters. I'm Ray Forrest saying so long. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Also, do not forget Saturday as the action gets going, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. It is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video.
too. They be on that rap to pay the bills, bills. And now I'm spending not even a little bit. Oh Lord, know yourself, know your worth. My actions being louder than my words. How you so I but still so down to earth. Do it, we can do it on the turf. Oh Lord, I'm the rookie in the vet. Shout out to the bitch, I ain't holding down the set. All up in my phone looking at pictures from the other night. She gon' be upset if she keeps scrolling to the left, dog. She gon' see some shit that she don't wanna see. She ain't ready for it. If I ain't the greatest, then I'm headed for it. Yeah, that mean I'm well. Yeah, the chicks ain't friendly, but the smell. It's on. Plus, world champ Rolly Romero never misses words. Pitbull, all bark, no bite. But Mexican powerhouse Pitbull Cruz is ready to silence the trash talker. Shh. It's a night full of world title fights. Live on PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video.